U.S. District Court for District of Ohio, Monk City, Ohio, is open for student to adjournment. All those having business before this honorable court, draw near, give attention, and you shall be heard. You may be seated.
the defense will show that the defendant was participating in the First Eclectic Study Group, which is directly associated with the First Eclectic Church. The prosecution will attempt to prove that the First Eclectic Church is not a bona fide religion. Allow me to elaborate on the word bona fide. This is bona fide as defined by Webster's New Universal Unabridged Dictionary, with good faith without fraud or deception, genuine. The defense will show through the expert testimony of Bobby Roller, the minister of the First Eclectic Church, that eclecticism is a genuine religion in the best of faith without fraud or deception. By Webster's definition, eclecticism clearly is a bona fide religion. However, this really is not the issue in this case. Regardless of the First Eclectic Church's status as bona fide or not, this is my client's chosen religion and is equally protected under the Constitution Amendment 1. This previously established precedent clearly illustrates this fact. The Constitution protects every belief without regard to its theological foundation or idiosyncrasies, Wallace versus Jeffrey. By citing my client, the arresting officer, law and order, has violated my client's most basic fundamental rights of religious expression. The defense will also show through the testimony of Holly and Bobby Roller that there was a supervising adult present on the evening of May 19, 1994. This combined with my client's participation in a religious activity clearly exempts her from this curfew. The defense will also show through the testimony of Holly and Bobby Roller that the arresting officer, Law and Order, is biased towards eclecticism. The defense will show that Officer Law and Order repeatedly made snide comments about eclecticism. The defense will also show that Officer Law and Order made no attempt to investigate my client's claims that she was participating in a religious activity. Furthermore, the sighting of my client violates every ideal established by our forefathers. This precedent leaves no room for question. The determination of what is a religious belief does not turn upon the judicial perception of a particular belief or practice in question. Religious beliefs may not be acceptable, logical, consistent, or comprehensible to others in order to merit First Amendment protection. Thomas versus Review Board of Indiana Employment Security. Thank you, Your Honor.
regular timing. Officer, do you see the Senate and Portland today? Yes, ma'am. Can you please put him or her out? The Portland no. The defendant is the person sitting on the front porch. Your Honor, let the record show that the witness has, in fact, identified the defendant. The record does reflect the identification. The juvenile was given an explanation for being there past 11 p.m.? Yes, ma'am. And what explanation did they give? She said that they are having a religious study group. And how did you feel about this explanation? I didn't really believe it. Ms. Order, did you cite any other individuals at this time? Yes, ma'am. Were they in a study group? No, ma'am. Were they in any other part of the restaurant? Yes, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross. May I please report? Officer Order, did you join the Army after you got out of college? Yes, ma'am. And while in the Army, you served in the military police, correct? Yes, ma'am. And your job in the military police was as a traffic director, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you were in the military police for three years, is that right? Yes, ma'am. And during those three years as a traffic director, isn't it true that you only worked the rear areas, yes or no? Objection, Your Honor, this is irrelevant. We applied it to the cross-examination, and this was raised in the direct examination of the experience he had, so we'll do it. Proceed. Then you didn't have much experience with actual crime, and you became a police officer in 1993, isn't that correct? Yes, ma'am. Officer, isn't it true that your job with the new provincial police department is radio car patrol? Yes, ma'am. And in the 1993 rest stop massacre, weren't you radioed mistakenly? Yes, ma'am. Isn't it true that the highway patrol actually has jurisdiction over the interstate? Yes, ma'am. But you visited the crime scene anyway, isn't that right? Yes, ma'am. And isn't it true that you didn't even think about the jurisdiction problem until after the time? Yes, ma'am. You had an incident with Jeff's kidding prior to the night in question, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And when did this incident take place? I do not recall the date. During this incident, didn't you cite him for reckless operation of a motor vehicle? Yes, ma'am. And wasn't the citation later reduced to speeding? Yes, ma'am. And you weren't happy about that, correct? Yes, ma'am. On May 19, 1994, you entered Charlie Formage's, correct? Yes, ma'am. And isn't it true that you're already irritated by a previous incident with college students? Yes, ma'am. When you saw Jeff kidding, whom you thought was under 17, you headed over to confront him, correct? Yes, ma'am. Wasn't Holly Roller also in Charlie Formage's? Yes, ma'am. And you say that you saw her standing over by the morbid combat machine, correct? Yes, ma'am. Was Holly the one actually playing morbid combat? No, ma'am. When you asked Holly why she was at Charlie Formage's, she responded that she was there for a religious study group, correct? Yes, ma'am. And weren't some of the members of the study group that she referred to still sitting at the corner booth in the dining room? Yes, ma'am. And after Holly had given her explanation, isn't it true that you did not believe her? Yes, ma'am. Officer, did you bother to take a look at the books on the table where the group was meeting? No, ma'am. So even after Holly told you that she was practicing her religion, you failed to look for evidence to back up her story? Objection, Your Honor. This is irrelevant. What does this have to do with the case? It's overruled. Could you please repeat the question? Isn't it true that even after Holly told you that she was practicing her religion at Charlie Formage's, which is the reason she was there, isn't it true that you failed to look for any evidence to back up her story before giving the citation? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I have no further questions. Are you ready? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. 
Yes, Your Honor. Officer Order, why did you go to the rest stop massacre? Because I was caught by the Because I was ordered to. And at that time, what gave you the feeling that you had to be at the West Stop Massacre? It sounded as sounded as if people were in trouble. Mr. Order, do you believe in freedom of religion? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the question, John. Recross. I have no further questions. Thank you. Your Honor, the prosecution calls the last day of the scene. Here's where it was. Judge, you're right here. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and comply with the high and low trial conditions? I do. Could you please state your name and address for the record? My name is Les Fay. I live at 1228 Brentwood Road, apartment 21, New Provincial, Ohio. What is your present occupation, sir? I'm a full-time student at Agricole College in my second year, and I am assistant manager at Charlie Formatures. And how long have you been employed there? For two years. What shifts do you usually work? Because of school, I usually work the evening shifts. What kind of crowd is usually at Charlie Formatures? Mostly high school students, and every once in a while some college students will come in. They come in usually after 11 o'clock now since the curfew violation ordinance. And have you had any problems with this crowd? Some. Nothing real major, but some incidents, yes. And have you had any problems with the... Have you had any problems at Charlie Formatures after the curfew ordinance was passed? Objection, Your Honor. We need a witness. Um... Overruled. Sir, are you familiar with Paul Rowland? Do you want that question answered, Counsel? Yes, I am. Could you please pull the defendant out in the courtroom today? This is the... The defendant is the female with the shirt. Your Honor, let the record show that, in fact, the witness has identified the defendant. It does. Mr. Fay, are you a member or aware of the First Eclectic Church? I am not a member of the Eclectic Church, but I am aware of it. And to your knowledge, do they have an established place of worship? No. From what you observed, what do the meetings consist of on Thursday evenings? Um, they get together and, um, read and discuss certain textbooks, and they talk. Your Honor, may I have a moment? Yes. Your Honor, may I please press your witness? Sir. Mr. Fay, could you describe what is, in fact, in Exhibit 1, which is People's Exhibit 1? Yes, this is the diagram of Charlie Formage's restaurant. Could you please locate the booth that they are usually holding the meetings in? Um, it's this booth right here. It's back, it's the corner booth back near the video games, the coffee station, and the cigarette machine. How do you describe the noise level of this booth? Um, because it's close next to the video games, it gets pretty noisy back there. Your Honor, may I please approach the witness? Sir. Sure. Mr. Fay, could you describe for the court the incident that you observed on May 19, 1994, concerning the defendant? Yes. Um, we were low on people. I was working the kitchen in the front area. I was washing off a table close to the cash register when Officer Order walked in. Um, it w I, I do recall that it was after 11 because I looked at the clock while I was washing the table. Um, he walked in and went over to Jess and asked Jess to turn around. 
but he was obviously busy with his video game. Um, the officer turned Jess around and asked for his ID. Um, then the officer asked what everybody was doing there, but I couldn't hear the reply because they were too far away. When the officer left, did you happen to hear or notice anything that the juveniles were saying? Yes, Jess was fairly upset. He was referring to the to the officer as the Gestapo. He was raving about his video game, game being messed up, and Holly was also pretty upset. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. As you stated, you're, you're the assistant manager for Charlie Formages, correct? Yes, ma'am. And Charlie Formages does not sell alcohol, does it? No, we do not. So this is a good place for high school students to go, correct? Yeah. You've known Holly Roller for two years, is that right? Correct. And doesn't she often come in to Charlie Formages? Yes, yeah, she does. Last spring, didn't she start coming regularly on Thursdays? And weren't these Thursday meetings for an eclectic group that she began? Yes. For this meeting, don't the participants meet at a corner booth in the dining room? Yes, they do. And isn't this table one of the most private tables you have in your dining room? Yes, it is. Assistant manager requires a fair amount of duties, is that correct? Yes. Is one of these duties cashing out the customers? Yes. And don't you normally cash out Holly and her friends? I usually do. On the night of May 19th, your cook called in sick, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. So you were working in the kitchen and the dining room? Yes, I was. Isn't it true that you didn't cash out Holly and her friends that evening? No, not that evening. Then you don't know if the meeting had ended for sure, is that correct? Correct. Mr. Fay, do you make it a habit to listen to your customers' conversations? Do you know exactly what Holly and her friends discuss at their eclectic meetings? No, not exactly. However, you do know that on the night in question, they had several books with them, is that correct? Yes, they did. And among these books, were the Dao Te, Dao, Dao Te Ching and the Fundamentals of Buddhism there? Yes or no? Yes. On the night of May 19th, you saw Officer Order enter the restaurant, correct? Yes, I did. Do you agree that sometimes the officer is wound up? Yeah, he can get pretty wound up. Isn't it true that you wouldn't want to be on his bad side? Yes or no? No. Or yes, it's true. When the officer came in, didn't you think that he made a direct beeline for just kidding? Judge, your honor, irrelevant. It was the motivation of the officer. When the officer came in, didn't you think that he made a direct beeline for just kidding? Yes. And didn't he put his hand on him, on him and pull him around? Yes. Did you hear Officer Order ask what they were doing there? Yes, I did. And you stated that it was a long distance away, so you couldn't hear the response, correct? No, I could not hear the response to the, the kids. Yet you are absolutely sure that you definitely could hear the officer asking the question, is that right? Yes, he has a really loud voice. Now at this time I'd like to approach the witness. This is a copy of Defense Exhibit 1, and the prosecution has already received a copy of this diagram. If it would be all right, I'd like to ask the questions from right here. Sure. Could you please show the just in the court what this is a diagram of? Yes, this is a diagram of Charlie Formosh's restaurant. Right. And would you say this is an accurate representation of Charlie Formosh's? Yes. Could you please point out to the court where the corner booth is that the group usually meets on Thursdays? Yes, it's right there near the coffee station, the video games, and the food machines. And could you please point out where the Morbid Combat Machine is? It's over here by the restrooms. And would you please point out where the women's restroom is? Right over here. Now, 
a path leading from the women's restroom, if I'd be allowed to show on the diagram, path leading from the women's restroom this way down to the corner booth. Would you say that that is the most direct route to that table? Yes. And doesn't that direct route pass the more of the combat machine? Yes. So it is correct to say that Polly could have been, have been on her way back from the restroom to the table and passing the more of the combat machine, correct? Yes, she could. trouble with the customers in Charlie Formage's on May 19th? No. But if there had been, would you have been responsible for taking care of that trouble? Yes. So you could say that you were there to supervise any problems that came up in Charlie Formage's, correct? Yeah. Mr. Bay, you also said that you are in your second year of college, isn't that right? Yes. So it's safe to assume that you are 18 years or older? Yes. Mr. Fay, you've been to a couple of eclectic meetings, correct? Yes, I have. And don't many of the eclectic seem to be very committed to their faith? Yes, they are very committed to what they're doing. You're not very religious, correct? No, I'm not very religious. But isn't it true that if you're going to be religious, that you consider going to the eclectic meetings? Yes, I suppose I would. Thank you. I have no further questions for this witness. She was standing and she wasn't walking near. Were you working a double shift that night? Yes, I was. So did you actually have a chance to see what everybody was doing in the restaurant? No, I didn't have much time. I was really busy. So you didn't get to see how people were behaving? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Recross. I have no questions.
many of our members were farmers and they wanted to get as much daylight time, so we decided to do it at dawn. Objection, Your Honor. That's the witness. Uh, if I can point out the witness testimony, it says they meet an hour after sundown, not at dawn. Excuse me, Your Honor. That was a little error on part of the witness. Just saying. Would you like to uh, recount when the meetings were being held? Wednesday, an hour after sundown. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Roller, are you related to Holly Roller? Yes, I am. How are you related to Holly Roller? Holly is my daughter. Is Holly Roller a member of the First Eclectic Church? Yes, she is. How long has she been a member of the First Eclectic Church? She was born into the religion. In your position as minister, could you please tell the court about the defendant's attitude towards religion? She's very dedicated and enthusiastic about the religion. How does she show her enthusiasm? She decided to start uh, a youth group for our younger members of the church. You testified earlier that the First Eclectic Church meets on Wednesdays. Does the defendant attend these meetings? Yes, she does. Objection leading the witness room. Your honest question is foundational. Well, sometimes with expert witnesses, uh, that sort of broad latitude is required to the reading this time. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, does she ever attend any of these services? Yes, she does. Has she ever missed any of these services? Yes, she's missed a few. Why did she miss these services? See, she's on the soccer team, and she's a star player, so it's mandatory for her to <laughs> be at these practices and games. Ms. Roller, you testified earlier that the defendant established the first eclectic study group. Why did she establish this group? Her and some of the younger members of our group were <coughs> having trouble understanding the text that we were discussing in our Wednesday night services. They decided to get together so they could go in more depth and understand down at their level. Ms. Roller, is this group recognized by the First Eclectic Church? Yes, it is. Where, to the best of your knowledge, does this First Eclectic Study Group meet? They meet at Charlie Formage's restaurant. When does this group meet? They meet on Thursday evenings. Why does this group meet at Charlie Formage's? They figured it was the best place for them. It's an environment which they are all used to and familiar with. So they wanted to go there so they could have a familiar environment and be comfortable. So does the First Eclectic Church recognize Charlie Formages as an acceptable meeting place? Objection, Your Honor. The council continues to lead the witness. Um, we're leading some part on this direct examination. Yeah, Mrs. Roller, you testified earlier that the Charlie Formages. I know that it's a place where um, high school kids and college kids go. There's no alcohol served and it's a real comfortable environment. So have you ever attended one of these first effective study group meetings? No, I've never attended one of the meetings. Why have you never attended? I feel that this is a chance for Holly to show her leadership skills without me looking over her shoulder all the time. What time does the defendant usually get home after one of these meetings? It's usually 11, 11, 15. How do you feel about the defendant meeting at this particular hour? I think it's good. Why does the defendant have to meet at this particular hour? Well, her and some of the other members of the study group have chores and are told that they are to be home for dinner and do some chores and stuff before they go to this meeting. Do you know Officer Law and Order? Yes, I do. How do you know Officer Law and Order? Some people in my congregation have come to me with comments that he has told them about many different things. What is Officer Order's reputation? <laughs> His reputation with our church is not very good. Uh, has Officer Order ever made any snide comments about Pleasantism? Some of my congregation members have come to me with the comments that he has that called us a smorgasbord religion, that we were not a real religion at all. I see. Mrs. Roller, as a minister, given your understanding of the First Amendment as applied to religion, was the defendant unjustly cited? In my mind, I think she was. Thank you. There are no further questions this time, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You never agreed with Christian Warmans, did you? No, I did not. You, did you ever speak to Holly about the curfew? We talked to her. Yes or no? 
Charlie Fromage's restaurant? Is Charlie Fromage's managed by an adult? Yes, it is. Who is this supervising adult? Um, the manager is Charlie Fromage. Uh, could you identify, or excuse me, the, who is the managing adult on the evening of May 19, 1994? Les Fay. Could you please identify Les Fay? Um, he is over there in the striped shirt. Let the court, let the record show that the defendant has identified Les Fay? To the best of your knowledge, how old is Les Fay? He's probably around 20 or so. Objection, Your Honor, this is irrelevant. Your Honor, I am clearly showing that the place was managed, this establishment was managed by an adult. Overruled to that one. What time does the group meet? Um, it, around usually 9 o'clock. When does the First Effective Church as a whole congregate? On Wednesday nights, an hour after sundown. Do you attend these Wednesday services? I'm sorry. Have you, uh, have you ever attended any of these Wednesday services? Yes. Have you ever missed any of these Wednesday services? Yes, I have because of, I have soccer practices or games. Uh, back to the study group. Tell us about the material this group usually studies. We study the basic books of our religion, such as the Bible, the Torah, the Tao Te Ching, and the Koran. What materials were you studying on the evening of May 19, 1994? Well, we were in our um, social study cl class, we were studying Buddhism, so we really weren't using our books that evening. As a member of the First Eclectic Study Group, what are your responsibilities to the group? To do anything that will allow you to understand the, the religion at all the best way. So you get, this time around, I'm going to request to be allowed to approach the witness. Was the one didn't want closing counsel RC for you to receive a copy of this. This has been introduced by both sides. We'll review it as it's writing. So. Thank you. Could you identify this, please? Yes, it's a diagram of Charlie Formage's restaurant. Does this appear to be an accurate replica of the floor plan of Charlie Formage's? Yes. Exactly where in the restaurant does the first eclectic study group meet? We meet in this corner right here. Why does it meet in this particular location? Well, Charlie Formage himself recommended this as the most private place in the restaurant. On the evening of May 19, 1994, did, you take a, did anyone come to take a restroom break? Yes, I did. Who took a restroom break? Objection, our counsel is leaving the witness again. Your Honor, I believe I was advancing with my next question. Well, I'm over right now. I did. Who took a restroom break? I did. Could you please describe your exact route to the restroom? Well, the women's restroom is right here, so I went from the corner and then into the restroom. Is this the most direct route? Yes, it is. This time, Your Honor, I'm going to request to submit this into evidence. Approximately, how long were you in the restroom? Um, it was probably around two or three minutes. What did you pass on your way to the restroom? Uh, there were vending machines and a couple of video games. After leaving the restroom, where were you headed? Back to the table to round up the meeting. You testified earlier that Jess Kidding was also at this meeting. Where was he during the restroom break? He was playing the video game, Morbid Combat. To the best of your knowledge, what was he doing? He was playing the video game. I see. Did he say anything to you as you passed on the way to the video games? Yes, he said he was having his personal record and wanted me to stop by and see how well she was doing. To the best of your knowledge, how long were you in the vicinity of the video game? Approximately five seconds. Question, Your how long she was in the vicinity of the video game is irrelevant to the actual time of curfew. Could you please answer the question? Approximately five seconds. Thank you. Do you know Officer Law and Order? Yes, I do. How do you know Officer Law and Order? Um, I believe he's had some run-ins with my best friend, Jess Kitty. To the best of your knowledge, what time did Officer Law and Order come into the establishment on the evening of May 19, 1994? It was probably around 11 o'clock p.m. Where were you when he came into the restaurant? I was paused by the video game. What did Officer Order do when he came into the restaurant? Well, he made a direct beeline for Jess. Objection, Your Honor. The witness was obviously watching the video game and does not really know the officer's action prior to addressing the defendant. Well, I ask you to surmise that, but we'll, we'll find that out the witness. Okay. What was your reaction when Officer Order came into the restaurant? Well, I wasn't really aware at the time, so I even said hello to him. I see. Did Officer Order ask you anything? Yes, he asked me what I was doing there, and he asked for identification. 
what was Officer Order's reaction when he realized that you weren't 17 years of age? Well, he almost seemed happy about it. He immediately gave me my citation. What was Officer Order's reaction when you made him aware of the fact that you were participating in a religious study group? He wouldn't listen. I tried to explain to him that I was only paused by video games, and I had previously been deep in discussion at the meeting, and he wouldn't listen. Um, to the best of your knowledge, did Officer Order make any attempt to investigate your claim that you were participating in a religious study group? No, he did not. No further questions this time, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. It's true that in your deposition you stated that on May 19th your discussion was based, was based mostly on your social studies class that week, correct? Yes. Uh, where were you when Officer Order arrived? I was passed by a video game. But it, it is true that you were standing at the video game and not in walking. Yes, I was passed by a video game. Were you the only one who received a citation? No, I was not. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Yes, may I please report, Your Honor? Ms. Roller, could you please tell the court what you were studying in your social studies class? Buddhism. To the best of your knowledge, is that a religion? Absolutely. We know for the question this time, Your Honor. No, thank you, Your Honor. This time, Your Honor, the defense rests. Um, are you prepared for closing arguments at this time? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Please. Prepare to go forward. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, my name is Nicole Smiley, co counsel for the prosecution. Your Honors, regardless of what the defense would have you believe, this is a simple case of curfew violation. Holly Roller was, in fact, out past the curfew hour, a fact which the defense has never denied. The fact of the matter is, when Officer Order arrived at Charlie Formatis, the religious group was finished and Holly was watching a video game. Not only do the facts support the citation, but so does case law. In QUTV v. Strauss, an appeal was brought to challenge the constitutionality of an nocturnal juvenile curfew ordinance enacted by Dallas, Texas. The ordinance was in response to the demands of concerned citizens for protection of the city's youth. The ruling in this case was to uphold Dallas' ordinance. It was the court's opinion that their curfew law was as unrestricted as possible. New Provincial's ordinance is virtually identical to that of Dallas'. The city of New Provincial is not bad guy in this issue. In response to a rise in juvenile offenses, the city council enacted a curfew to protect minors. FBI statistics prove that juvenile crime, both as offenders and victims, is on the rise. What made these numbers truly hit home for the New Provincial was the malicious slaying of a 16-year-old boy from that town. No one has been able to answer the question of who committed this heinous act or why the boy was out at such a late hour. Due to the combination of all these events, the town council passed a curfew ordinance. Ordinance number 21309 of New Provincial, Ohio, employs the least restrictive means possible. The curfew hours for both weekdays and weekends are more than generous. There are also ample exemptions, seven to be exact, to an ordinance that has only one way to offend, and that is to stay out past the reasonably established hour. Bobby Roller allows her child a great deal of freedom, as she has stated in her deposition. It is because of parents that allow their children too much freedom that cities enact laws, like curfew ordinances, and attempt to protect youth from harm in hopes that they will be alive to create a safer and better tomorrow. In these situations, our government is being forced to try and succeed where parents have failed. The defendant may claim that she was involved in a religious activity, but the fact is, at the time Officer Order arrived, she was at a video game. It would be highly irregular to include morbid combat in any religion, including a practice of As far as the juvenile's First Amendment rights being violated, it has been long established that minors do not have the same rights as adults. Juveniles are prone to falling prey to dangerous activities. Curfews in any situation are attempts to protect youth. The same is true with youth provincial. They are trying to prevent young citizens from being victimized. On May 19, 1994, Officer Law and Order walked into Charlie's Formages at 11.05 p.m., clearly past the 11 o'clock curfew. 
Officer Order observed several youths in the restaurant, many of which were gathered around an <coughs> arcade machine. After questioning the youths, he proceeded to check their identifications and determined two of them to be under 17, thus in violation of the town's curfew. Both the juveniles were cited for their violation. One of them was the defendant, Holly Roller. Counsel for the defense, in this case, claimed it to be a criminal proceeding, thus requiring proof beyond all reasonable doubt the defendant broke the law. Holly's own admission to be out, to being out past 11 o'clock doesn't leave reason to doubt. It leaves no doubt. Your Honors, in this case, you're deciding more than just the legality of a suspected juvenile curfew violation. You're also deciding the constitutionality of the new provincial curfew ordinance number 21309. The defense has shown with the testimony of Ms. Holly Roller and Mrs. Bobby Roller that the ordinance was applied unconstitutionally and that the defendant's most basic fundamental rights were violated. Ms. Roller's right of association for social purposes and the freedom of movement to use public places were violated. These liberties are protected by the First and Fourteenth Amendments. The defense has shown with the testimony of Bobby Roller that Holly is a responsible young adult who started an educated group for teenagers to further explore the religion of eclecticism. Ms. Roller has also testified that eclecticism is in fact a religion. Holly's mother approved of her meetings with the eclectic group and she knew what the time was that they had to meet and saw no problem with this. She was under the, she was under the understanding that Holly's activities were accepted under the ordinance because she was in fact there for a religious purpose. The testimony of Holly Roller has shown that Holly was on her way back from the restroom at the time law and order came in. She was not playing a video game. She was merely trying to get back to the table to close up the meeting. She simply paused by the video game. Just kidding was the actual person playing the video game and Holly should not be held accountable for Jess's actions. Holly has also testified that to the best of her knowledge, Les Fay was supervising the restaurant which includes the customers in the store. The prosecution has brought witnesses. With law and order, we have found out that he didn't even investigate when she had told him that she was there for religious purposes. He didn't bother to go look at the books on the table and we have seen with his background information that he has gone out of his jurisdiction before. Didn't even think about it until after the fact. His feelings also get in the way sometimes. He said that when he came into the restaurant he was already tense from a previous incident with college students. With Les Fay, we found out that the route from the restroom back to the table was the most direct route that passed the Morbid Combat Machine and Holly has also testified that that was the route that she did use. Les Fay has also said the officer order is sometimes wound up and he would not want to be on his bad side. He also said that he thought that law and order made a direct beeline for just kidding. Also, we have shown with the testimony of Bobby Roller that law and order has made comments that show bias towards the eclectics saying they are a smart support religion. Furthermore, this law does not pass the strict analysis which a law of this nature must pass to be acceptable. It was not drawn with precision and it is not tailored to meet governmental objectives which a law of this um, which a law of this order must show. The city of New Provincial has yet to show sufficient need for this ordinance. It is too general and does not take into account the needs of the minors subject to these unjust burdens. Minors are persons under the U.S. Constitution and have the same fundamental rights which government must respect. Tinker versus Des Moines. If an ordinance is unconstitutional as applied to adults, it survives scrutiny as applied to minors only if the following factors exist. The peculiar vulnerability of children, the inability of children to make critical decisions in an informed manner, and the need to ensure that parents are able to play a central role in raising their children. Pilates versus Baird. 
the city of New Provincial has yet to satisfy any of these particular criteria. Holly is not vulnerable. She has made wise decisions in a mature manner, such as starting the eclectic study group. And she realizes the importance of parental discretion, which is why she had to meet so late on those Thursday nights. This ordinance violates more than just the defendant's fundamental liberties. It violates Mrs. Roller's right to religious expression. Although the first eclectic church got a non-traditional religion, it is still a religion as stated in its established precedent. It is unfair and prejudicial to determine a religion not acceptable based on the fact that it may not conform to the beliefs of the majority. The Supreme Court has never defined religious belief, but it offers understanding. Go ahead, counsel. You have much more to go. No. That it offers understanding with the precedence it establishes. The court offers this, the determination of what is a religious belief or practice does not turn upon a judicial perception of the particular religion or practice in question. Religious beliefs need not be acceptable, logical, consistent, or comprehensible to others in order to merit First Amendment protection. Thomas versus the Review Board of Indiana. It has, again, violated a precedent set. Thank you, Counselor. Chair, I'll offer a Okay, well I guess the case is concluded and I appreciate counsel's attendance to this matter. Uh, my my uh, code jurist will retire right now. Does either team have any serious reason to believe that a material violation of any rule has occurred in the course of conduct of this matter? Do you wish to confer or so? Counsel, do you wish to confer? Okay. Well that's the case then take a break and I'll retire.
understand. Uh, in this particular case, if we could pronounce her name, we'd, uh, we would. Uh, is it Petro? Is it Petro? Fully. I, I prefer a fully roller, but. <laughs>